<clears throat> the excessive questions warrior. The excessive questions warrior. That's going to be the subject of today's podcast. And you're probably wondering, what do I mean by that? What does that phrase mean? Well, that's a term that I've coined to describe a certain type of personality that I've observed in my 23 years of practicing law. And I think this observation applies not just to people who, who come in to consult with a professional for services, but I think with any person who is offering to sell a product or service out there. So time to listen up and make some notes about a certain personality type that's out there. All right. You know, the conventional wisdom out there is that when you're trying to hire someone to do something, that you're supposed to ask a lot of questions. You got to probe into this. You got to do this, do that. You know, these these books and self-help, I don't know, what's the stuff that's on the internet. It's always telling people and funneling into their brains this idea that you've got to pepper the person with tons of questions. What is this? What's going on with this? How, what's, your, what's your background? How many cases have you done like this? Uh, how, what's your depth of knowledge? How many, all this type of stuff. And, you know, it sounds great in theory. It's the type of advice that sounds really great in theory. But I can tell you in practice, in practice, in actual practice, anytime I've ever seen somebody like that come into my office for a consultation who's asking a million questions, many of which might tend to be about you yourself instead of the subject matter, then my experience has been that person never hires you. They never do. Because what they're doing is they're just probing. They're probing, they're price shopping, they're trying to establish control over the interaction, they're trying to establish their dominance over you. And this is really a personality type that nobody really ever talks about. Now I want to make it clear, because there's always these nibblicious dunces out there that are going to take what I say and draw all sorts of of unwarranted conclusions from the statements that I'm making. There's nothing wrong with asking questions. In fact, I want people to be engaged. You want people to ask questions. You want them to be uh, knowledgeable about the process. Let's, let's, say, let's say it's some sort of legal process you're doing or you're taking on their case and you need to describe the parameters of what to expect, how the court system works, what sort of relief can be expected, all these types of things. You want to be sitting across from someone who's engaged, who's involved in the process, because those are good clients. Those are good people. So there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with asking questions. What I'm talking about is something very different. What I'm talking about is the person who comes in with their little notebook or their clipboard or whatever, and they start turning the questioning around about you or about what you're going to do for them or about what your uh, do you under do you realize that their case is special and unique and has all these special problems and and you get all these uh, types of specific questions that call for legal conclusions and specific legal advice none of which of course they've hired you for yet so that's generally a bad sign well, I, not general, that's always a bad sign because those people are never going to hire you. They're never going to hire you. Some questions are fine. Some questions are encouraged. In fact, a lot of questions are fine and a lot of questions are encouraged as long as the target of the questions the, or the tone of the questioning is not a, a sort of a condescending, uh, you know, suspicious, furtive, eyes darting back and forth type questioning where you feel like you're being given the nth degree. You feel like you're sitting in there for a police grilling. That's what this type of interaction can feel like. And that's a very, very bad sign. If you detect any sort of feeling along those lines, you really should bring the consultation or the interaction to a conclusion because the person is never going to hire you. They're never going to do it. And, you know, it, it's the type of thing that when you're a young professional starting out, people seem to detect you know, when you're younger, when you've just started out, when you're trying to build your reputation, when you're trying to establish yourself. There are a lot of uh, sons of bitches out there, frankly. And some of them really try to 
prey on you or try to make you feel like you don't know what you're doing or they try to make you doubt yourself or they try to somehow act like they're interviewing you. No, you're, they're not interviewing you. You're interviewing them. They're the ones that come to you. They're the ones that, that, that are sitting in your office. You're the one that has the answers. You're the professional. They're the client. And if someone cannot take guidance from you in that very, very simple interaction, then you've got big problems. And when you're young and when you're starting out, these types of unscrupulous sons of bitches, can, they can sense that. And what they do is they try to use that to make you feel bad, to try to somehow get some sort of thrill out of letting you know how great they are. And, um, you know, a lot of these are sort of these the, the older, the older type business owner, these types, these disgruntled, angry individuals, those types of people. But again, it, it cuts across all ages and both male and female. It, this is a personality type that is not really restricted to one specific uh, profile, but you do see some commonalities. Okay. But so when you're young and when you're starting out, you get a lot of this. Okay. As you see, one thing I've noticed is as you get older and you become more and more established and knowledgeable in your profession, you get very, very much less of it. People can detect it because these types of people, these excessive questions, warriors, they can sense that you're not going to put up with their bullshit. They can feel it. Just your stance, the way you answer the questions, the way you look them in the eye, the type of questions you ask them, they know. They know you've been around the block. They know that you know spring chicken. And once they sense that, the interaction goes very, very smoothly. But when you're starting out, that can be a problem. I mean, you're never fully free of it. You're always going to get people that are going to try to somehow make you feel like... Um, they're somehow evaluating you. They make you feel like, well, are you, are you any good? Are you, uh, are, are you worth anything? Are you any good? You know, you should not ever put up with that. Never put up with that because there's a strong compulsion that young professionals have, young attorneys, young accountants, young doctors, I think, or I think people in any profession. Again, this is not just related to law or any specific, um, any specific trade. I think anyone, anyone offering a service, but I think there's a strong tendency when you're starting out to try to sell yourself, to try to convince the other person that you're good, that you can handle the case, that you're the right person for the job. It's, it's a natural reaction, I think. It's a natural reaction. And they can always detect that, that sort of try-hard attitude. And again, you're never going to get anywhere with that because... You, you just have to realize and you have to know in your bones that with an excessive questions warrior, you're never going to win. No matter how well you answer their questions, no matter how adroitly you address their concerns, no matter how thorough your knowledge base, no matter how experienced you are, no matter how many of their cases that you've handled, they're always going to find something wrong. And they're always going to find something to uh, uh, to uh, disqualify you. There's always going to be some disqualification factor. So one of the things that you learn to do, you know, with these types of scenarios is you simply bring the interaction to a conclusion. If you feel like you're not, if you feel like you're being um, targeted by an excessive questions warrior, you simply stand up in your office and you say, look, I think we're done here. I've, I've gone, gone over it as much as I can. I've kind of laid out the parameters. If you want to give me a call, here's my card. And that's it. That's it. Don't sit there and take that abuse. Don't sit there and, and sell yourself and, and somehow, you know, put yourself on the hot seat for his or her grilling questions. It's just not worth it. Because what ends up happening is you end up feeling angry and, uh, upset for the rest of the day. And this is something I kind of wish I had learned uh, a long, long time ago. Because when, when, you know, the first, first few, first uh, years when you're starting out, you know, you, 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 you want to sell yourself. You want to explain what you can do. But uh, some people are not really about that. What they, what they really want to do is they have ulterior motives. They're not dealing with you in good faith. They're not there to, to really get information. Some of them have no interest in hiring anybody at all. 
They're just there to try to make themselves feel superior and to make you feel inferior. It's a power game. It's a power play. And you may say, boy, that's really sick. That's Why would anybody do that? Why would someone take the time and effort to go and consult with someone if they have no interest in hiring anybody? And the answer is, you know, some people are just like that. They want to pump you for free information. They want to try to see what they can scam out of you. And you have to be aware of the fact that as a professional, the only things that you really have to sell are your knowledge and your experience. And if you've been around the block, if you've been playing the game for you know, decades, then you've got a lot of knowledge and you've got a lot of experience. And you should never sell yourself short, ever. So really, one of the corollaries of this podcast is respect yourself, value yourself, hold the line. You know, if something if you know how much time or work something is going to cost, then you should quote a price that is commensurate with the work involved. Too many people I see out there are doing valuable work for not enough money. And what they do is they end up hurting everybody because they they devalue their services. They devalue themselves. And, you know, it, it's, it's amazing how, how people do this. They somehow think that if they charge lower prices or if they charge, you know, rock bottom prices, that they're going to get more volume and they're going to get more people. And but that's it never works out that way. Because what ends up happening is when you don't charge a price that's fair or commensurate for the service involved, you get swamped with dregs who waste your time. And it's usually the, the worst clients are the ones that pay the least. That sounds paradoxical, but it's true. It's been confirmed by experience. The worst clients, the very worst ones, are usually the ones who are paying you the least. So take note of that. Remember that. It's just unbelievable. And so what you do is you run, you're angry, you're running around, you're, you're giving people, uh, you're, you're devoting your time and your resources to people who don't appreciate you, who are not paying you. And what ends up happening is you lose uh, the good clients that you could be focusing on or working on. So take it under advisement. Take it under advisement. When you have the excessive questions, warrior, whether, whether it's in person or online or whatever business you're in, realize that you're not going to convince them. Be polite to them. Answer their questions up to a point. And, but once you've, you've put in a good faith uh, effort, once you've made things clear, then you need to wrap things up and move on. Give them your card and move on. All right, that'll be all for this podcast. I'm Quintus Curtius, and we'll talk soon.